We're about to have a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July, everybody. This is Matt with State of Flux here with a review for the original Steven Spielberg classic, Jaws. This is a film that shows off exceptional craftsmanship all across the board, from directing, writing, acting, music, uh, the photography, everything about this movie just comes together and works. A lot of which by design, a lot of which by happenstance and accident. This is probably a much scarier film than it would have been had the big animatronic shark actually worked. The fact that it didn't and couldn't function, weirdly enough, in the water made it so that Spielberg had to use his creative energy and ingenuity to get this movie to uh, work on all cylinders. And he found creative ways of doing so. For a great big shark movie, you see very little shark. And this is something that horror movies forever after would start by showing very little of their monsters until they became the star vehicle of their franchises. You see this with uh, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, the, like Gremlins, any of these uh, uh, stories, the Critter movies, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you have a big bad monster uh, and or hulking bad guy, you started by seeing very little, and then by the end of the franchise, they're the main character. Um, but we're talking about the first one, which takes place over July 4th weekend, which is why I'm reviewing it right here, right now. Um, Sheriff Brody is a character that I absolutely love. His, like, big city boy who's uh, now become an islander who's afraid of water and then confronted with this shark problem is a pretty captivating story. My favorite scene with his character cementing who he is, uh, is comes at the hospital when he's telling his uh, wife to take the kids home. And she says, back to New York. And he says, no, back home. Cementing that he is now an islander himself and he is there to finish this job. He is the new sheriff in town. And... Uh, how he interacts with a lot of people is pretty pretty great, uh, but he's not the only swell and fantastic character in this. You have Matt Hooper, who in the book is rather or like repulsive kind of character that I just cannot stand, but in the movie is really likable and constantly being picked on by Quint, who is probably the best character in the movie, a modern day pirate and the best kind that there uh, is on film. He is so fun. His little limericks and uh, uh, sea shanties that he's constantly singing are uh, pretty fun. Uh, but these three characters really come together in their own when the film transitions from being a horror movie to an uh, adventure film. And that's something else I'd like to talk about. The structure of this movie is kind of unique. You start off with the first act being almost exclusively horror. And it is spooky new cheese. You don't see the shark until really the last act. The first act, you don't really see the shark at all. Um, and yet it is effective and it is scary because you don't know what kind of shark you're dealing with. This movie has been bogged down by the sequels. We'll touch on them in the weeks to come. I'm excited to address them. But um, uh, moving back, the middle section of this movie is more the, the drama of who these characters are, who Sheriff Brody is, and how it's affecting this town. And then the last act becomes the big adventure set piece where they're hunting the shark. It becomes Moby Dick. And in the book, which is a pretty awful book, I'm not going to lie, uh, the first chapter of the book is well written, but then like there, there's weird character dynamics. There's a love uh, story between uh, Brody's wife uh, and Matt Cooper. And that just, just does not work, and it's it, it's awful, and it creates a jealous ten, uh, tension between Brody and Matt, and it, like all of that stuff stuff was stripped away for this movie. Now, would um, the uh, Brody's wife have had a probably more complex and interesting role to play in the movie had they gone the way of the book? Yeah, she probably would have. But I don't like that story, and I don't think she would have come off well in it. So it was probably better to scale her back to what she is in this movie as a likable character and eventually the leader of her own movie. We'll get there. Um, <clears throat> the book that this is based on is uh, like not very good. And I don't think it's not very good because of 
uh, my relationship with the first Jaws movie and then reading the book. I don't. I just don't think it's a good book. There's a good plot throughout, but it is too much of a copy of Moby Dick or modern day reinterpretation of Moby Dick to be any good. It's pretty mean spirited and uh, sexist and uh, it's, it's just not a good, not a good book. That said, what Spielberg saw when he read Peter Benchley's book was a thrilling plot that has a unique structure and he utilized that pretty well in bringing it to the big screen in making what is considered by most the first modern day blockbuster. This is the one that sort of set the tone for years to come. Now is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's uh, debatable. Um, but because it was so successful, this film was not considered art, and I don't understand why that was. Uh, sure, it was nominated for Best Picture, but it was kind of criticized for being nominated for Best Picture. Now, it's easy to say years down the line that, no, this is in fact a showmanship of uh, excellent ta talent coming together to bring a rather mundane story and elevate it to the highest quality that ever possibly could be. Um, but at the time, the sentiments weren't necessarily that. It was a well-liked movie, but I think the fact that it got a nomination for Best Picture was more to do with its box office than what, uh, as like critics at the time kind of reflect. However, I challenge you to remember any of the movies that came out in 1975, but you remember this one. This one deserves that nomination. It probably deserved to win. Um, and as I say, it's through the excellent craftsmanship of everybody on board. The director of photography, the way this film is shot is fantastic. There's a great moment where Quint is introduced and the camera is slowly going in on Quint just as Quint is talking directly to Brody even though they're in a room full of people and then the camera is slowly zooming in on, um, on Brody. And it's, it, the people in the room are superfluous. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and that each character knows it, and the camera tells you that. And it's so, that, that's just one moment of true brilliance. The whole movie is filled with that. Um, wherever the camera is focused has a purpose, has a reason. The acting, the three stars of this film, Robert Shaw, um, is, is so, so good as Clint. He's, he's just so good. Uh, Richard Dreyfuss is fantastic. and. It's weird to think that this is just two years after American Graffiti, but he looks 20 years older. Uh, it's it's kind of wild. But they keep calling him a young kid, and I'm like, that dude looks 46. Um, <clears throat> um, but then, yeah, um, Roy Scheider as Brody, as I've already talked up, he's fantastic. He guides this film. Uh, he is the rudder with which this film works. The shark is the driving force. Is absolutely terrifying because you can't see it. When you do see it, it does kind of look a little animatronic-y, but uh, that's because you're familiar with this and we have, like, for the time, this was a great looking shark. And shark, I mean, the animatronic shark does look great when it's submerged underwater and just kind of coming out a little bit. When you have it fully, sum uh, like, on the boat flopping around, it looks a little kind of weirder. But uh, uh, that scene where Quint gets taken down is so effective. Uh, best scene of the movie is the scene where they're discussing their scars, and then it goes into the Indianapolis uh, discussion. Um, I think that's cited by many as being kind of the, the moment of true quality this film has, where these uh, three people who are all kind of antagonists towards each other come together for this one united moment, and then the shark attacks. And then it's just riveting from top to bottom, they're out. Um, yeah, this is my favorite movie of 1975. I like, uh, not a surprise. Um, I haven't talked about John Williams' score. John Williams makes this movie work as well as it does. It's scary because he makes it so. It is uh, exciting because he uh, he guides that emotion through you. When that shark blows up and you get the sting of it, you feel the elation, and then Roy Scheider tops that off with his, like, just triumphant cry of happiness. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, excellent movie. Spielberg shows 
that this this is his audition tape of the world. Hot damn, it's a great one. Now, sure, he'd made a couple films before uh, Summerland Express, which is eh, and then uh, Duel, which is essentially low budget version of this movie, um, which is also a great film. If you haven't seen Duel, check it out. But this is essentially his audition tape to the world, and he shows everything that he is capable of, um, shy of like one or two little elements. Having a movie that's scary and funny and dramatic and has uh, pure emotional beats just between two characters. The scene where the son is mimicking the father. In a lesser film, that scene would have been lifted because it doesn't do anything to like propel plot. It is purely a character moment and a beat between two people that feels real and authentic. And that's something that you would get in his movies later on, is the uh, authenticity of human interaction. And it starts right here in this film. You get the touch of his World War II uh, picks that are going to be coming forward when he's doing the Indianapolis discussion. Um, this is uh, craftsmanship at its finest. I love this film. It's an easy four stars. And next week I'll be talking to you about Jaws the Two. So, uh, yeah, let me know what your favorite part of Jaws is in the comments down below. Um, I have a lot of favorite moments. Um, all throughout the opening scene is absolutely genuinely iconic uh, and I uh, that's one of my favorite scenes to rewatch but I also I got to admit my favorite like just beat is the father-son moment uh, where the two come together and the father and son are mimicking each other it's, it's super sweet and I love it um, thanks for watching like subscribe do all this good stuff 